Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, these uh, first 10 days of uh, Muharram. Um, we have with us Dr. Aslam Abdullah, who will be talking about the history of uh, Muharram and also will be talking about uh, uh, reconciliation uh, uh, between Shia and Sunni points of view that you often encounter ourselves here. Uh, and in this session, uh, we will also have uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, uh, Dr. Uh, Walji, uh, who will be speaking from a Shia Khoja perspective about the perspective of Muharram. And today we have, uh, we'll start off the session with uh, Dr. Aslam Abdullah. Uh, Dr. Aslam, assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem khatam al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallu la ala al-nabi ya ayyuhu al-lazina aman yusallu alayhi wa sallim taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin kama sallayka ala ibrahima wa ala ala ibrahima inna kamidu hujid. Allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin kama barik ala ibrahima wa ala ala ibrahima inna kamidu hujid. It's the first day of uh, Muharram of 1442. It's a day that Muslims trace their calendar to the migration of Prophet وسلم, from Mecca to Medina. But it's also a day that begins one of the greatest tragedies, or I would say the greatest tragedy of the Muslim community. Some 58 years after the departure of Prophet Wasallam, And there is an intrinsic link between what happened in Hijra and what happened on the first 10 days of Muharram. Hijra was a dream to create a society based on justice and peace. And during the first 10 days of Muharram in 16, 680, we saw and we read the actual manifestation of sacrifices that one offers to defend justice and peace for all. The Quran places emphasis on life and calls it sacred. But in those two events, we find that those who believe in the sanctity of life were willing to offer their lives for the purpose of life for which it is created. And we will explore that in the coming 10 days of this month of Muharram. But let's first look at the Muharram itself. The names that we are familiar with, the lunar calendar names of the Islamic calendar, like uh, Muharram, Safar, Rabiul Awwal, Rabiul Sani, Jamadul Awwal, Jamadul Ukhra, Jamadul Sani, Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Zuqad, and Zilhaj. Well, not the names that pagan Arabs had identified in their long history. In fact, when we look at the pre Islamic Arabia, we find that uh, Safar, the, the Muharram, the first one was called Al Mu'tamar in the pagan Arabia. The second month, Safar was called Najr. The third month, Rabiul Awwal was called Khawan. The fourth month, Rabiul Bukhra or Rabiul Sani was called Baksa. Then Jamadul Ula was called Hussain. Jamadul Sani was called Rubba. Rajab was called Al Muharram. And Shaban 
was called Adil. Ramadan was called Natiq. Shawwal was called, called Ba'al. And Zuqad was called Warana. And Zul Hijjah was called Burak. At what point of history the name were shifted and changed, we do not have accurate historical understanding, but certainly it happened before the Hijra became because the Hijra uh, was uh, Hijra calendar was designed in order in in terms of the names that were prevalent at that particular time. Even though our historians tell us that the Hijra of the Prophet وسلم, was done on first of Rabiul Awwal and the Prophet reached in Medina on the 12th of Rabiul Awwal. But when the Islamic calendar began and was officially uh, formalized, the Muharram was declared as the first a month and the Hijra dates are traced to that. Uh, Hijra took place in 622 and there is a dispute uh, on the dates. Some say it was the 17th May, some say it was the 16th July. And when we talk about 16th uh, July or the 17th May, we also make a distinction between the Julian calendar and the Georgian calendar. Julian calendar was named after Julius Caesar. And in the Julian calendar, every 400 years, there is a three days difference. And every day, there is 10 point, every year, there is 10.5 minute difference. Julian calendars are longer by 10.5 seconds every year, while the Georgian calendars uh, are less than that. And uh, we also understand that the Muharram was a month that was uh, considered a sacred month in the pre-Islamic era. It was uh, the tradition of pagan Arabs to change the Ghilaf of Kaaba or the curtain of Kaaba on that particular day. It was also a tradition of the pagans, as we read in some sources, uh, to fast on that day. It was also the, uh, but the Quran uh, sanctified this religion as it was also sanctified in the pre Islamic era. And pro probably Brother Alim would play the uh, text of the Quranic message that tells us about the sanctity of four months, including Muharram, Rajab, Ziqad, and Zilhaj. So the, the, these four months that we descri describe as the sacred months were primarily sacred because during these months, the people from different parts of Arabia would come to perform Hajj or Umrah. Rajab was a month in which they would come for to perform Umrah and Ziqad and Zilhaj when they will come to perform the Hajj. And Muharram is the one that would come immediately after Zilhaj and uh, the caravans would be going back. And in that particular, these four months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it obligatory upon Muslims and the believers not to engage in fight, not to engage in conflict, not to engage in anything that would relate to violence. Why? The answer is simple, to ensure that the people who have come to pay their tribute to God Almighty on, in, in the Kaaba, in the holy place of Kaaba, should return safely and peacefully. So the peace was the essence of declaring these four months, and this is how it was trained. It does not mean that the people should fight in other months, but it simply means that they uh, that they should train themselves first in these four months and then subsequently towards the uh, whole days. Now, 
when we look at the Muharram, which is essentially a unifying month of Muslim, we find that over 1400 years, something unusual has happened. That uh, once community that claims itself to be Muslim focuses on one aspect while neglecting the other, and the other community does not give that much emphasis on one aspect while focusing on the other. Well, the reality is that both are intrinsic and then we will cover that in the third segment that we would have. Today, we want to focus on the issue of the Muharram from the perspective of those who claim themselves to be Sunnis, even though they become Sunnis and Shias, in the perspective of a Quranic community, does not matter much because we are all Muslims. We believe in the oneness of God. We believe in the Prophet and the family of the Prophet. We believe in the Day of Judgment. We believe in the Quran. And we believe in the authentic sayings of the Prophet, even though we may have differences on how those were collected and collected. So the Sunni perspective has also two perspectives. One that relates everything good to the month of Muharram, especially to the 10th day of uh, Muharram. They would say that the Adam wasalam, was forgiven on this particular day. They would say that Adam wasalam, landed on this day. They would say that Nuh wasalam, disembarked from the, the ship that he had built. They would say that in this particular day, uh, uh, a lot of other uh, incidents took place, such as Musa alayhi salatu uh, uh, you know, did exodus from Egypt against the Pharaoh. And they would also say that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was also uh, blessed on that particular day with the good things. Now, these are fables that have not been verified. They are found in some books, but the authenticity is not traced back to the Prophet وسلم, in an authentic manner. What is uh, important is that to understand that in the Bukhari and other Muslim uh, books, Sunni books of Hadith, they, we find a reference to the fasting on the day of Ashura. Now, this is also a, a, a very interesting proposition that needs to be looked into the context in which we are talking about. As you said, the, the, the fasting was prevalent within uh, the pagan Arab community. And before the migration of the Prophet ﷺ, there are certain reports that say he fasted on the 10th day based on the information that he was given uh, by the historical sources. What we are told that when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, he found Jews fasting on the ninth, on the 10th day of Ashura, believing that that was the day when Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam left Egypt or the, the Pharaoh's uh, despotic uh, country and moved out. And when he saw those people doing that, he said, let us also celebrate it by fasting. Now, there are two issues in this one. First is that the Jews used to fast 25 hours on that day. And the second is the day when Jews used to fast was not the 10th of Muharram. It was the 10th month of the Jewish calendar, which is called the Shiri. So, and there is one uh, narration by Imam Muhammad Bakr, which is found in Al Kafi, that the Prophet وسلم, said that uh, from next year, if I'm alive, I would not fast on the 10th day of Ashur of Muharram, rather, I would fast on the 9th or 11th. 
And also there is an explanation in a book of Hadith, which is called Fatuhul Bari, an explanation of Bukhari, which this is, uh, he, this is what he said that yeah, I would fast on the, and Imam Baqir said that once the fasting month became obligatory, then it, uh, uh, the Prophet never fasted on the 10th of Ashura, but this is uh, what our scholars say, what our books say, and certainly without going into the merits of one or over the other, this is what uh, basically we should keep in mind. But what is important is that in one of the hadiths that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that before the fasting month of uh, um, Ramadan became obligatory, he is talking to Ali radiallahu ta'ala uh, the, the fasting of uh, in Muharram are not obligatory. So that is one issue and the Muslims usually fast on that day. We'll come to the Shia traditions later tomorrow, inshallah, when we will discuss it with uh, Dr. Hussain Walji. And this is uh, a contentious thing uh, uh, because uh, this fasting, if it is uh, uh, made up, uh, recommended by the Prophet is in celebration of the freedom of the Jews. And certainly, when we look at in the context of what happened on Karbala on the 10th of Aram, Hussain, uh, Imam Hussain was martyred, then it becomes a, a, a somewhat conflicting thing. And then we will have to basically look into it in detail in the third part of our discussion. So that is one thing that the Sunnis focus on. The second thing that the Sunnis, or what we call the people who identify themselves with Ala Sunnah al Jamaat, would say, uh, because the Shias are also Ala Sunnah, they also follow the Sunnah, the Prophet, even though their mafas or their directors are different. So they can also be called Ala Sunnah al Jamaat. But what we find uh, is that uh, the second tradition that the people who call themselves Sunni, to celebrate the month as a month of Hijrah. Now, Hijrah is a very significant concept in the history of religions, not just in the history of Islam, not just in the history of Muslims. And it basically summarizes this basic principle of the Quran. Then that you must make every effort to establish justice and peace as defined by God Almighty for all humanity. And when you find that all the doors to establish that justice and peace are closed in one particular place, then you should move out and make effort in other place where the conditions are conducive. The first Hijra was made in uh, 615 when the Muslims went to Abyssinia and Ethiopia that we call today. And the second was on 622, a year before that, the people of Medina came to perform Hajj. And during that Hajj, they promised that they would be the supporters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ensure that uh, he uh, fulfills the dream of a just and peaceful society in that part of the world. Now, Hijra is not a flight from Mecca to Medina to escape persecution. Prophets don't do that. Prophets face the persecution as history tells us. They never abandon the people. And when one such prophet had some issues on this particular thing, he was born in the Quran. So the prophets face the persecution. Prophets remain committed to the ideals of justice and peace, no matter what the conditions are. But when the opportunities and doors are closed by the power elites of a particular place in cohort with the people around them to destroy the dream of justice and peace, then the migration takes place. And it is 
In this particular context, the hijra was a well-calculated movement on the part of the Prophet. It did not happen all of a sudden in a haphazard manner. For almost 13 years, he endured everything. He faced all the persecution. His uh, followers were persecuted. They were killed. And yet he did not move at that particular time because it was in the planning stage. And this is something for us to understand. And then the Prophet moved from Mecca to Medina. He was fully prepared. He had mapped the road 320 kilometers or 200 miles. He had mapped it. Those who would help him in this journey had gone through this uh, uh, 320 kilometers several times to make sure that the passage is proper. They have identified the places where they would stay. They had identified their places to basically confuse those who would follow them. That's why Abdullah bin Arifat, who was a non-Muslim, was uh, also someone who is uh, uh, hired by Prophet And then Prophet used his uh, expertise to go from Mecca to Medina with the help of Asma bin Abi Bakr. Uh, they lived in the Ghar for three days and Asma bin Abu Bakr was the one who was assigned to help the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the food and Abu Bakr with all the necessities. One is the, one of the most interesting feature of this hijra was the provisions that the Prophet took with him during this journey. And he took besides other provisions, a pen and ink pot. As we find that uh, uh, with the story of the Saraqa, that when he was about to approach the Prophet وسلم, he could not. So he asked Prophet وسلم, to give him amnesty and asylum once he reaches to, to Medina and you know, gives him some reward. And the Prophet gave his words, but he said that give me in writing. And he certainly wrote a letter, which we find in many of the books of Ahadith mentioned. So why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took that uh, ink, ink and uh, ink pot, primarily to ensure that if the Wahi comes to him during this journey of 12 days, it is written down, it is not forgotten, and the people in the future may not point fingers at him and say that, well, how do we believe that this was the way that was given at that particular time? What is the proof and all those things? So it was meticulous training. And the Hijra then tells us that when the believers take any action, they should take action with full preparation and full understanding and full uh, 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 what you call provisions so that all aspects of that project are taken care of. So they, we find that the, these two things, the fasting as well as the uh, hijra are the two areas that are highlighted by those who call themselves Sunni during this particular month. Uh, while we will see tomorrow what uh, is uh, the other significance of Muharram in relation to these two aspects of dignity and justice and fairness, and then how that lived in the world of Islam over the centuries. Uh, we will inshallah now have uh, some uh, questions and some discussion if that is possible because we still have five more one minutes. Yes, uh, thank you Dr. Islam for this uh, 
introduction. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the constitution of Medina? You know, yes. as part of this uh, this hijra and part of this. The, the, you. We start this uh, this this yeah. Islamic calendar. Wonderful. I think you brought that relevant question. The first thing that the Prophet ﷺ did after his arrival in Medina is that he invited all the community leaders of Medina, including Jews, Christians, and pagans, and asked them to draft a treaty which is called Mithaq e Medina, or the Constitution of Medina. It has 57 articles. And sometime we feel that it was only in 1780s when this country came up with the idea of the we, the people of the United States. In fact, that idea of common citizenship that we trace back to 1780s, but it was in the Bisak and Medina, the first line says, we, the people of Medina, give this constitution to ourselves. And the process of making this constitution was amazing. A first draft was prepared with 57 things in which Jews and the Christians and every religious community and non-religious community was given the right to have their own uh, uh, religious assembly and religious personal laws that also identified the common defense for all the people that when one of the tribes, one of the community will be attacked, all will defend. And there was an insurance that if any one of the communities is killed or is hurt or injured, his family will be taken care of by the state. The idea of a common citizenship emerged. And when the first draft was made, the prophet asked the tribals to take it back to their communities and get it approved, then brought it back to the Prophet And then it was redrafted and then sent back to the tribes again, and then it was given a final share. What is very interesting is that four of the tribes of us refused to sign initially that, that particular constitution. And we do not hear any retaliatory action on the part of the Prophet against any of these tribes, no mention of any hostilities against them. What does it prove? It proves the fundamental point of democracy that the right to dissent is an essential divine right that has been given to individuals to even question the political arrangement and administration of a state, even if it is run by a prophet. Right to dissent is the essence of democracy. And that right, when those four tribes refused to acknowledge, was accepted by the Prophet ﷺ, and we do not find anything. So that Misak al Medina is found in many of the books of Ahadis, it is also called in one of the uh, marvelous books written by Professor Hamid al-Asidipi, which is called Al-Wasai Qus Siyasiya, Li'ad al-Islami. They mention about this Misa Qutina. So thank you for pointing that out to this discussion. Yes, I, I think you know, the Shia or Sunni perspective of uh, focusing on a narrow uh, uh, band of history that we have uh, should be very broadened and uh, we should look at uh, our history and these months and these instances in a much larger perspective. So uh, when we are talking about uh, the, the hijra and starting of the new calendar uh, beyond all of the old historic aspects that you mentioned, uh, from a Sunni perspective, and of course, the greatest tragedy in Islamic history, the martyrdom of Imam uh, Hussein, uh, uh, this Medina Charter is a very important Indeed. aspect. Of it all. I think what we also need to realize is that uh, 
the unity would come as we would explain on the third day. On the essence of faith itself, that is justice, peace, liberty, equality, the core values of Islam. Islam was not just a ritualistic faith. It Islam began with the idea of justice. Islam began with the idea of equality. Islam began with the idea of uh, fairness. Islam began with the idea of liberty, freedom. And the migration is a manifestation of that. And the martyrdom is an actualization of that at a time when all these values were at stake and were in danger. And what is important to realize is that uh, we can separate the martyrdom in two categories. That one is that when you are martyr in fighting others, means those who, have, who do not claim that they are Muslims. But the second one, which is the most difficult one, that when you stand against those who claim to be Muslims, and yet who are seen as the ones who are challenging those basic essential values of Islam, then that is a martyrdom that belongs to one in our history, and that is the grandson of the Prophet And there has to be a synthesis between these two on the basis of the values, on the basis of the ideals. And once we have those ideals as our driving force, I hope and we pray that a consensus would emerge um, a, 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 the differences that we have uh, lived for centuries might be mitigated. Excellent. Uh, maybe you want to just cover uh, uh, a little bit about uh, Dr. Walji, uh, who will be with us tomorrow, and give a yes. brief introduction about him. Of course, we'll introduce him tomorrow. But for the people who are listening today, uh, it'll be interesting, and uh, hopefully they'll join us. Uh, if you can just give a brief uh, 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 introduction. Of course, you knew him, you have known him for a long time, so maybe you can talk about it from a personal perspective. Yes, my my relationship with Dr. Hassan Walji goes back to England, where I was there 30 years ago, and Dr. Walji was a prominent member of the Muslim community. He was always striving to bring the two communities together. He has been the president of the Hoja community. He comes from Tanzania. Even though his field is not uh, theology, he is uh, a bioscientist and he has many patents in his name and he has done wonderful work. He has uh, organized several philanthropic organizations, institutions in different parts of the world. And tomorrow when you would introduce him, uh, you would basically mention all those things. But uh, certainly uh, it is so nice of him that in this month when the Shias have this first 10 days of the days of mourning, and when they basically have their own majalis and their own things, that he would come uh, uh, on the second and third day, and if possible, on other days also to be part of this deliberation. By the way, Dr. Walji is also starting a series on the issue of justice and dignity uh, in the context of the martyrdom of the Mao Zedong on a website uh, that probably tomorrow we will be able to share from Saturday from four o'clock Pacific time or seven o'clock East Eastern Standard Time. He is located in Dallas and certainly we are honored that he's joining us and he's joining the Islamic city for this bold and very courageous step to bring these two communities together. Because Brother Ali, uh, in my 50 or 55 or 60 years of Islamic uh, work, I have not seen a unifying forum like this in the first days of Ramadan. And you are making history by creating this forum. And we hope that uh, this spirit that we are displaying is maintained in the coming years, not only by Islamic city, but many other institutions and organizations all over the, the, the country. and. You know, also the credit goes to you that you published an article on uh, Hijra as well as Muharram on the first day of Muharram. So thank you very much for that. No, you're uh, most welcome. I think uh, this is our uh, mission in terms of 
uh, of uh, finding out uh, what uh, our religion is and connecting with our faith and making sure that uh, we can unify ourselves instead of dividing ourselves. And of course, the Shia Sunni uh, issue is one of the greatest tragedies uh, of Islamic history and has been exploited and abused by various people for their own, uh, uh, for their own gain. Uh, we can have multiple perspectives and still make sure that we have a, uh, a, a peaceful existence uh, with understanding and love for each other, each other. So we, we yeah, I mean, our, our, yes. our purpose, Brother Alim, is very sincere, that uh, we too who value justice and fairness and liberty should not be seen opposed to each other rather should be seen as one standing for those values that were dear to the grandfather of the one who sacrificed his life and to the uh, grand, uh, you know, the prophet who migrated and risked everything, leaving behind everything that he had in Mecca. Yes. Well, so uh, inshallah, we'll be looking forward uh, for the program tomorrow. And uh, inshallah, we can conclude with dua. Yes, inshallah. I was belaying the shaykhon of regime. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna l-insana lafi yukhusr illa al-lazina amun wa'akir salihat kutubhas ilhaq kutubhas kutubhas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are humble, we are weak. But we come with all sincerity to you. For the sake of your prophet and his family and his message of justice and peace. And we ask you to guide us to a path that would bring unity amongst us and that would eliminate all those differences that we have entertained for several years with prejudices and with hatred against each other. We want to live in the shadow of peace. That was the motto of the prophet and his scribes. We want to live in justice and peace. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati and my sifu. Wa salamu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Islam. So uh, hopefully if uh, people in Shada join us tomorrow, if you have any questions, uh, you can go to the bottom of the page under comments. You can post your questions. And uh, inshallah, we look forward to a, a good session tomorrow with Dr. Islam and with Dr. Wazim. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.